In this question, we are dealing with a random variable y, which is normally distributed with mean 6 and variance 2. Uh, the information you can find here. And we'll take a sample and calculate a sample mean. And the sample will have size n that will uh, vary. So let's write down what the information is we have. y normally distributed with mean 6 and variance 2. And that will be mu y and sigma squared y. And we will also have to calculate probabilities for y bar. So we need to know the distribution of y bar that's normally distributed because y is normal and we know the variance of y. Okay, if that wasn't the case, then y bar would be t distributed. And y bar will have a mean mu y bar and a variance sigma squared y bar. Now that mean turns out to be exactly the same as the mean of y. Okay, that's uh, a little nice fact, but the variance of y bar is going to be the variance of y divided by the sample size n. So let's go to question 1.1. One, one. We want to calculate the probability that y is larger than 8. We know we need to translate that into a standard normal probability to be able to get probabilities from the table, so we apply our standardization formula. So that's the same as the probability that z is larger than 8 minus 6 divide by square root of 2, where 6 is the mean of y. So that's uh, 1.41. The, that's the same as 1 minus the probability that z is smaller than 1.41. So let's look at that in a little sketch. z is centered around 0, 1.41. What we are after is this probability that z is larger than 1.41. That's the green bit. But we know from the standard normal table we can probability of this kind that set is smaller than something. So that's this blue bit. And since both blue and green bit add up to 1, we can calculate the green bit by taking the blue bit away from 1. So that's pretty easy. That value you can get from the table. And I assume you know how to use the table. You can get the value 0 0.9207. And therefore, we get a value of 0 0.0793. So that's the probability that z is larger than 1.41. And that's also the probability that y is larger than 8. So let's go to the second question. Now we're dealing with y bar. We want a probability for y bar. That means we need the distribution for y bar. If the sample size is 1, as in this first part, then the variance of y bar will just be 2. So it will have y bar will have exactly the same probability distribution as y itself, and therefore the probability that y bar is larger than 8 is the same as the probability that y is larger than 8, and we just calculated that as being 0 0.0793. So that was a little bit too easy. Let's move on to uh, the next question. Now we have a, a larger sample size, not a trivial sample of 1. The sample size now is 2, and that changes the variance of y bar to 2, which is the variance of y divided by the sample size. So hence the distribution for y bar, it's a normal distribution, forgot that here in the front, it has a mean of 6 and a variance of 1. So. Probability of y bar larger than 8, that will need to be translated into a standard normal probability using our standardization formula. So that's probability that z is larger than 2. That's equal to 1 minus the probability that z is smaller than 2. And that will be equal to 0 0.0228. Okay, again, I assume that you can get probability values of the standard normal table. Last bit. Now we are having a sample size of 5. That's reflected in the variance of y bar. So we have y bar being normally distributed with mean 6 and variance of 0.4. Then we want the probability that y bar is larger than 8. That's the same as the standardized probability that z is larger than 8 minus 6 over square root of 0.4. If you calculate that, you'll find that this is 3.16. And that's the same as 1 minus probability that z is smaller than 3.16. That's 1 minus, actually, approximately 1. So it's 0. So let's reflect a little on what we've achieved in this question. 
We calculated probabilities for the sample mean for three different sample sizes, one, two, and five. And it should be obvious how to do it for any sample size. We want to find out what the general pattern of results was here. So y bar, we know the mean was six, and we were interested in the probability that y bar comes out as as a value larger than 8. So the sample size was 1. The distribution of y bar was actually exactly the same as the distribution of y and the probability that y bar would come out larger than 8 was about 8%. When the sample size was 2, the distribution looked slightly different and we found out that the probability now the area underneath the plaque distribution to the right of 8 was 0 0.0228 so it has, had shrunk significantly and if the sample was even larger then that probability was basically zero. So that probability shrunk with the sample size. Okay, so in here are just the, the variance we had calculated. The larger the sample size, the smaller would be the variance and therefore the, the more concentrated the distribution of y bar around the mean of six. So the larger n the smaller the sample variance of y bar and that was because this is the formula and that value sigma y was always unchanged it was just the the n the sample size that changed in these calculations